Hello, good morning. Still on to how to solve simultaneous linear equations. In my previous lesson, if you could remember, I told you simultaneous linear equations can appear in different forms. So look at the one I have here on the board. These two terms appear to be in an index form. And the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And there is a particular law in laws of indices that says if you have a number, say A, to the power of b, if this is equal to another number, the same number a, to the power of c, this implies that b must be equal to c, if at all they have the same basis. So what we have here, the left hand side is written in an index form, but to the right hand side we have a whole number. So what we are going to do, we are going to transform these whole numbers to an index form in such a way they will have the same basis. Here we have 4 to the power of x plus y. We want to raise 4 to a particular number that will give us 64. And we know that 4 to the power of 30 is equal to 64. You can also transform this 4 into 2 power 2. And 64 can also be written as 2 power 6. So because 4 can satisfy this, we don't have to transform it into base 2. From the left hand side, we have 4 to the power of x plus y. And this is equal to 64. And 64, remember, can be written as 4 power 3. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Uh, we can call this equation 3. So from equation 2, we can also transform it to power 2x minus y equals to 128. And 128 can also be written as 2 power 7. Let me call this equation 4. Now, since they have common basis, we can equate their indices. For an equation 3, we can see that x plus y must be equal to 3 for this equation to be true. And from here, 2x minus y must be equal to 7 for this equation also to be true. So we can say this is equation 5 and this is equation 6. Having obtained these simultaneous linear equations, we can go ahead and apply different methods for solving simultaneous linear equation. But the most preparable way to solve this is by elimination because we have the same coefficient of y just that this one is negative while this one is positive. So by adding these two equations, we can eliminate y. From the right, we have our constant 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. And y plus negative y is 0, so we have eliminated it already. And x plus 2x is 3x. And this is equal to 10. Now to find the value of x, we divide both sides by 3. We divide both sides by 3, and hence, x equals to 10 over 3. So having obtained the value of x, we can go ahead and substitute it back into either this equation or this equation to obtain the corresponding value of y. So you can see, we have gotten our x to be equal to 10 over 3. So we can see 10 over 3 plus y equals to 3. By multiplying each of these terms by 3, we are going to get rid of this fraction. So 3 times 10 is 30 divided by 3 is 10. Plus 3 times y is 3y. Equals to 3 times 3 equal to 9. Our main target is on the y, so we are going to take this constant to the right hand side. So we are only left with 3y from the left hand side. And this is equal to 9 minus 10. And 3y is now equal to negative 1 because 9 minus 10 is negative 1. To find y, we are going to divide both sides by 3. So from here, we have 3y equals to negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. Hence, y equals to negative 1 over 3. Now we can conclude by saying the values of x and y uh, for x we have 10 over 3 and for y we have negative 1 over 3. 
these are the real values of x and y uh, so thank you for watching don't forget to share this video and click the like button